It's your boy Concert Viz 34, and today we're going to talk about Dave Matthews and Tim Reynolds, aka Dave and Tim. They are a dynamic duo that will be taking their talents to Riviera Maya, Mexico for a third year in a row. Uh, this President's Day weekend 2019 upcoming uh, to start off uh, for the second month of next year, Dave and Tim will be playing. More guests to be announced. And I wanted to talk about this. And also, as much as I kind of despise this whole concept of pricing out people, making it all or nothing, I actually have some input to why this is the way it is. And I give a little defense to Dave and Tim and also just artists in general as far as what they face um, when they have a passionate fan base in their home country. So... Dave and Tim, President's Day weekend, February 15th through the 17th. They go back to Mexico for a third year. Uh, highlights from last year include a rarely played Trouble song from Some Devil that Dave and Tim played uh, and other great selections for all three nights. Uh, they really put together some great sets for these special shows. And as always, this is going to divide the band's fan base by economic and uh, financial, uh, you know, situations here. You're going to have people that either have a lot of money that can spend it, or you're going to have people that it doesn't matter really how much money they make, but they save a lot of money for the situations like this, a special vacation away from the crazy hustle and bustle of the real world. They're going to be able to go. Other fans who are realistic and want to pay for their kids college or thank you, Patrick Brewer, I see you saying you enjoy the videos. Or other people that may have good, a lot of money or may have a certain financial situation that's different, like you want to actually get your kids through college, you want to save money for a rainy day, uh, you want to invest your money for retirement instead of uh, spending 3 k or 6 k or 7 k on just the package alone, let alone the flight. People like that aren't going to be able to go to this but they would love to have a show in Florida, in the Gulf Coast, uh, out in California for February that they could travel to on a more feasible method. So this, this three-day event divides not only Dave and Tim, but you have this with Fish, who does this. You have uh, Dead and Company, who have the playing in the sand uh, situation that they do down in Mexico as well. These type of events that really only limit wealthy fans do make average Joes upset, especially again. I mean, some people that are going to these shows, you got the money. Other people are literally saving pennies, sacrificing all they have to go. But other people are like, look, I want to retire. I want to pay for my kids' college. I'm sorry. Like, I, I care for care about my kids. I don't drag them around to DMB shows with headphones on. Anyway, that's a shock. But anyway, let's focus, get back on topic. So this is something where, to me, every time I see these announcements, I'm like, look, at this time, I'm in my late 20s. I got money, but I don't have that much. My earning power is not what it's going to be in 10 years when I'll have a little more money to play around with. And again, I kind of want to save my money for retirement. My mom has had extensive uh, experience in, in middle management and retirement services. So that's the type of guy I am. I save my money uh, for retirement because I don't know what it's going to look like. Uh, when I hit 69, 70, it'll probably be 75 and a half by the time I can retire. Who knows at this point? But anyway, the point is, I don't want to go to this because I, I'm young and I need to save my money for other stuff like retirement, like uh, uh, hardships, you know, something that may happen to me. So I can't go. But what I thought about today is everyone will tell you why this is a stupid thing to do. Everyone will tell you why it's dumb to price out the fans. The other thing that's funny is um, nailing it with the wealthy fans. Couldn't trip, save up here to us. Yeah, so thank you, Patrick Brewer. Yep, you said it's, it's for wealthy fans. The other thing that's funny, though, and this is just a thing I'll get on real quick. I think it's funny that while I don't like what brokers can do for very high demand events, so the same fans that are saying, hey, don't, don't buy a DMB ticket $1 over face value, some of them are going to this. And you would think that Live Nation was setting platinum ticket prices for some of these 
events. Yes, I know if you go to these resorts without Dave and Tim, they're about the same. Yeah, but they're still expensive. I mean, shoot, if you just if you're mad about a ticket broker selling a ticket sixty over face and reporting them, then then please don't go to this, because the prices again, it's all inclusive. But you're paying a lot of money just to see Dave and Tim in an exclusive area. Now, if it's worth it to you, it's worth it. I know I haven't been. I, I can't, you know, I can't fully knock it until unless I was able to try it. But bruh, you can't be talking about ticket brokers in uh, uh, at Deer Creek or ticket brokers in Hartford. And then you're spending 5K for, just not before the flight, for, for a hotel and all these inclusive stuff. I don't care what's included. That's a lot of money. <laughs> if only it was pesos, right? As Patrick Brewer just said, right? Yeah, that'd be dope. <laughs> I'd be going right away, man. <laughs> but what I want to talk about is why I think that Dave and Tim do this, why Fish does this, why even smaller bands, you have the Dominican Holidays, some other stuff that, that pops off on cruises. I honestly think it's because of the fan culture in America. What this does is it really takes away the stalkerish tactics of fans. What I've seen on social media, especially with DMB, but with other bands and athletes and everything included, is these guys are going out to grab something to eat. They're going out to just chill with their family. And what happens? People come by, oh, I want a selfie, I want this, I want that, which is what you expect. That's what you sign up for. But the level of stalking that's going on with, with popular people in the United States, it's ridiculous. I mean, the, the people camping out, giving hotel addresses, letting people know when someone's flight's going to land. And it's very creepy. And you don't really have a break from it if you're Dave Matthews. Or if you're another big name personality, even if you're a small name personality now, people will find you and want to take selfies with you. What does this do? Well, first off, it gives the band a big wall, even though there's not technically a wall at all across the border. It blocks off thousands upon thousands of fans that could just go down there to creep. Because when a show comes to Saratoga, when a show comes to West Palm Beach, there's just people that can go there just to creep and camp out on the band, to get an autograph, get a picture. Saratoga Springs, some of the stuff I saw this year was ridiculous. Now, the band loves interacting with people, but the people that were camping out, one dude was taking photos with every single band member stalking them across Saratoga Springs. That's disgusting. I mean, if you run into them on chance, that's one thing. But this is exactly why I think Dave and Tim love uh, Riviera Maya. And they get this in Europe, too. There'll be fans that come up to the Americans who travel, some Europeans. Um, and yep, and Patrick Bruce talking about how you can't stand half the fans um, creeping out. And I agree. And that's why I didn't go to my first show to 2012 because the fans in my high school that liked DMB were all tools in Connecticut, suburban Connecticut. They were all tools, they were all spoiled. So I thought the music wasn't going to be as good live. I'd heard the studio stuff, but I was like, again, I wasn't seeking out live tracks. I wasn't as big of a fan until about 2011, 2012, when my friend convinced me to go. But long story short, the fan behavior in America is crazy. And when you get to a situation like these resorts, it's easier for the band to be with wealthy fans. Now, yes, some of these wealthy fans are crazy. They're nut jobs, too. Money does not take away the creepiness from people. And we've seen this with what's going on in Hollywood. But anyway, let's not talk about that. I'm going to sidetrack again. But the concern that the band has is, and with Dave and Tim, specifically, they just want to be, they want to chill. And what this does is the fans are having so much fun spending 5G on this, 5G on that, doing a helicopter tour, you know, doing stuff off the resort. You know, hey, let's go pay someone to, you know, go to these ruins or whatever. That... They're so consumed with that that Dave and Tim can probably just chill on the beach. Matter of fact, I'm sure they can bring their families. I don't know. I haven't, I'm not into you know, the gossip of who they're with their family here. But I don't know if they bring their families to Mexico um, or friends. But I'm sure they have at least people that they're with they can enjoy a little more privacy with. Because, again, these resorts are regulated um, and controlled. And I think that as much as I was saying last year, my, my stance last year, year two of this was, look, they should have this in Florida. They should have this on the Gulf Coast. They should have this somewhere in California 
So fans like the Gorge, yes, you're going to pay money, but at least you can go to one night. You can go to two nights. You can go to, you know, or you can go to all three. You can do a last minute trip. You can't do this with the Mexico thing. You got to be locked in or you got to buy someone's purchase. You got to, they have to transfer it to you. And you got to get them airline tickets ASAP because they're going to be expensive closer. But I think that if it was in America, again, the fan presence, you would have so many people getting on their nerves. And that's what they deal with all summer. We need to at least give them the spring off, you know? And um, the one-off shows, they fly in and fly out. But this is going to be three days where they can chill. There's no tour bus travel. They do the same stage. It's, it's just Dave and Tim. There's not 50 million things they have to get ready for like a regular summer tour. Although I'd love to see the full band in a special winter uh, show. Just for the, the streaming purposes. Uh, but it's, it's a little more easier to control and it's more of a relaxed environment. And that just came to me today. And, and again, I'm someone who's, who's, I don't like these situations because it prices out fans who, hey, I have a little money that I can save if I'm fiscally responsible, but I can make a road trip out of it. Like the Gorge, if you save for the Gorge, no matter where you live in the country, you can have different levels, camping, hotels, a really nice hotel, a really nice camping, you can rent an RV. There's different levels to the Gorge. That this Riviera Mai doesn't have. There's different levels where they start off at like 1500 1700 bucks plus flight, flight, which is going to at least be, for most people, round trip, at least 2 k 3 k if not more. So there's not levels to the Riviera Maya where an average Joe can just say, hey, I want to just go down to Mexico and go in. Look, it's going to be dangerous. You know, obviously Mexico has its dangers, but I'm going to take that risk for a more affordable trip. Just go to a regular hotel. Or you know what? I'm going to pull up for just one day. Get a nice hotel for two days. Go to one show. I'm out. You don't have that luxury. But again, I really think that when it comes to the, the, the artists and, and what they have to do on for most of the year during their regular tours, this is a nice break for a fish, for a dead end company. And if they want to engage with fans, they can go to the resort or whatever and there's less of them. Yes, there's going to be thousands of people there, but... For DMB shows, you have 50, in Hartford, we have 25, 30,000 people at a show. And then you have people just tailgating because they're chasing the girls, although the girls are getting older for DMB now. So, but there's still some college girls that like DMB or getting into them. But that you have those people that just, oh, hey, there's Dave. I want to take a picture. I don't know any of the songs, but I want a selfie. 30,000 people. Now, most venues is 10, 15,000, 20,000 people. That's a lot of people still that no matter where you go, the day of that show, the day before the show, if you're staying in there, they're harassed. So I really think that that's probably why they love this place. Because you, you, you're far away from all the craziness of the states. Um, and then you have the ability to play three amazing shows. It's a retreat. It's a way to renew your mind. And bands or, or artists like Dave and Tim, they feed off their environment. Okay, you see why this year, while you can argue about the sets, the environment of the stage this year was the best it's been in a while, in a decade. Fon said it today. This was the best tour since the past, or the best he's felt on stage since the passing of Roy. And we saw Fonz back at the Super Bowl. He was a little emo, and I was getting concerned. So Buddy, whatever Buddy did, whatever the band's done, they felt good this year. And I want Dave and Tim to, to be able to feel good, even if I can't afford it. Let me know what you guys think. Definitely like, comment, subscribe. But as much as I think I'm priced out, as much as I think there's a hypocrisy with fans that hate brokers but are paying these hotels, I think these brokers own the hotels. Fam, they're charging so much money, they have to be a ticket broker or a ticket master. Ticket master must own this whole, you know, some of these hotels or something. I don't know. Because this is this is like platinum ticket hotel price. <laughs> I mean, but again, if you go enjoy it. Do your thing if you have the money. We're not knocking you because you made that money, although we're a little jealous. Um, but if you have the wealth and, and financial ability, go enjoy it. Take a little break from life uh, and um, then come back and let us know how it was. Share video, please, <laughs> uh, so we can see this stuff with Copper Pot mixing it up. But again, it's your boy, Conserviz34. Twitter, at Conserviz34. Definitely like, comment, subscribe. I'm out.